So you'll notice that the, the Lord then makes a prophecy against Sennacherib that he will be brought low, and he tells the people, look at verse 24, therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt, for yet a very little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction, and then he prophesies his death. Now if you look over at chapter 11, you get this incredible um, description of this house. It's almost like this tree, the house of Israel being a tree that has been growing and growing and growing, and then God comes and cuts it down, first by the Assyrians, later on by the Babylonians, cuts it down, leaving the, leaving the house of Israel saying, oh, I put all of this work into growing this tree and now it's, now it's wasted, it's destroyed, and it becomes burned, and there's no hope. Well, chapter 11, keep in mind, these first 39 chapters, it's a lot of consequences, but there's this little glimmer of hope in chapter 11, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Keep in mind, Jesse is the father of David, Jesus is going to be a descendant of King David, so a little rod comes forth and a branch shall grow out of the roots. There's hope growing out of these roots, out of this tree that's been cut down, this lofty uh, growth that has been laid low. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him in the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. You get some beautiful connections with chapter 11 um, over in 2 Nephi chapter 21. It gets repeated, obviously, but then you can cross-reference it over to Doctrine and Covenants section 113. Section 113 is where Joseph Smith gets this opportunity to have a, a Q&A, a question and answer period with the Lord, and he asks a lot of questions about who's who in chapter 11 of Isaiah. This is a, this is a significant chapter for Joseph, and so it's going to come up uh, in, in a variety of places for him. Now notice one of these promises that will come through Christ in the latter days. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. This house that's divided, these two kingdoms that have been at war and have, have hated each other and been adversaries, it won't always be that way. The Lord will unify and bring them together in the last days. The gathering of the house of Israel is not just the gav gathering of a portion of the tribes, it's a gathering of all of the children of Israel, and those who aren't a part of that family be adopted into those tribes. It's going to be one family in the end. And then we get to the, to the closing chapter for, for today's episode in chapter 12, which, by the way, this is just, this is my own little opinion of all of the Isaiah chapters, all 66 of them. This is by far one of the shortest and, in my opinion, one of the easiest to understand. There's, you can read this, these six verses slowly, and you can see how it could absolutely be pointing us to the millennial day, but you could see certain elements of the prophecy being fulfilled at different phases of the earth's history, but hopefully you can see it in your own day as a story of redemption and forgiveness and mercy and grace, that when you fill of God's goodness, you can read these six, six verses and see how phrases like, in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. I, I don't know of a better way to describe forgiveness and repentance than, than those words right there. Verse 2, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. This is the name Isaiah. You translate this back into Hebrew, Jehovah is salvation. So he's preaching, Isaiah is preaching the meaning of his name. There's so much hope in the midst of all this chaos that has gone on, there's so much hope that if you focus on what Isaiah means, Jehovah's salvation, there's always hope. And like you, I take so much solace from this chapter after so much chaos of war that we've been seeing, there is hope in Jehovah. So as we conclude, just let these words just do more than bounce off your eardrum. Hopefully they, they sink deeper into your mind and into your heart 
Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation, and in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, thou inhabitant of Zion for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. So as we end this, this lesson from Isaiah chapter 1 through 12, just know that it's our testimony that the Lord God of Israel, Jehovah, is salvation, not just for them back then, but for us and for you today. Just know that he is in our midst today. His promise is, where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst of them. And we leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Know that you're loved.